Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Saturday, the 30th day of October, year of our Lord, 2021. Tomorrow we celebrate that uniquely Lutheran festival, Reformation Day, but it's a wonderful day. The banners will be read. We'll be singing a lot of the great beloved Lutheran hymns and focusing on grace do uh, again pray this finds you well. You know, you're supposed to be able to see the aurora tonight. It went out before this started. You, you might see the aurora. The chances are better than they normally are. Let's just say it like that. Can't really be predicted well, although we did have a solar flare. Coronal mass ejection is the uh, technical term for it. I think it was Thursday. And uh, it usually doesn't take that long for the particles to get here, but the effects of it can last for quite a while as they continue to come from the sun or that direction. Anyway, you the potential for seeing the aurora this far south is there. I, I went outside just before uh, this began. It was cloudy. Uh, we'll see how it is after. Hopefully the clouds won't, won't hang around. Fortunately, it'll be dark all night. The moon doesn't rise until 1 o'clock in the morning. That will definitely sour the viewing, especially this far south. Um, shout out to my Michigan friends. I knew that might be watching this tonight. Uh, at some point, there was a very, very good game at the old Michigan Super Bowl, Michigan, Michigan State, uh, for the Paul Bunyan Trophy, the Michigan Classic, I'll call it that. Uh, Michigan State won. It was a, a fantastically fun game to watch. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I know both big fans of Michigan and Michigan State. I lived in an agricultural community, so there tended to be more Michigan State fans than Michigan fans, but... Uh, Somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose, and today it was Michigan State, but it was a very, very good game to watch, uh, no matter who you're rooting for. Of course, if you were rooting for Michigan, you wanted them to win. They had their chance, but uh, go green, right? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And again, we turn to the daily lectionary. And again, you can find these readings if you have a hymnal. You can see, right, uh, we're doing the liturgy on page 298. You see on page 299 begins the daily lectionary. So today being October 30th, if I flip a few pages and see October 30th, and this was my devotional early this morning, Deuteronomy 31 uh, through 32 portion of of those chapters, and then tonight, Matthew 20 through 16, uh, one, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. That's where you find all this. Uh, it's also, if you have a, a Lutheran study Bible, it's in there as well. But that gets you good through a good chunk of the Bible, not the entire Bible. Uh, there, there are ways to read the entire Bible in the year. Uh, it's usually reading about three chapters a day, sometimes a little bit more. All right, again, tonight's reading is Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or you, do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, 
from the first last. And that is the gospel of the Lord. This uh, particular parable, and of course Jesus is teaching us, he's at the center of this, he is the one who hands out the pay, he is the master. He, the, 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 uh, 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 the master of the vineyard and the one who hires the laborers. This particular passage is one of my personal favorites simply because it is quoted heavily during that great sermon we read every Easter vigil, or at least I read. It is a sermon, one of the great church fathers, John Chrysostom. It's 600 words. And there's a reason to rejoice right there. It's only 600 words. But it is just dripping with the gospel, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, pointing us back to what we celebrate on Easter Sunday, which is the vigil is the first celebration of that. And he wrote it for that day and that evening. But anyway, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful sermon because he pulls on this point here. You know, it is the Lord's gift to give as he wants. He gives to the last as he gives to the first. You know, it is his gift. And hopefully in our church, we don't begrudge that. He is, he is teaching the church there, especially as you're dealing with the, the Pharisees the, 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 and the Israelites themselves who have kept the promise for century upon century. And now we're going out into a, uh, will be soon sent out into the world to proclaim this gift of the gospel to the Gentiles who haven't borne the burden of defending that. And the Israelites had their moments where they weren't so good at that, but it was still their, their task to do, to defend that promise, to carry the promise to the world. And, and it's from them that the Christ himself came. So Christ is teaching the church, you know, people are going to come at the last hour and they're going to get the same thing as those who have been, who have been uh, there all day. Now one of the things we can rejoice in for those of us who have lived our lives in the church is that we've lived our lives in the church, that we have never not known the darkness of life apart from grace. I mean, even in our darkest moments, even in the depth of our sin, we know that the forgiveness is there. We know that, you know, that, that God's patience, his salvation, his forgiveness never runs dry. And, and that I am constantly under that banner of, banner of mercy and, and grace and that I am constantly an heir to everlasting life. Uh, it really is a glorious thing and a gloriously wonderful way to live our lives. And we should rejoice for those people who come at the last hour. I have done uh, more or less deathbed baptisms. You know, people are just a short while before they die. Of course, they're awake, um, and we've had some conversation about that. Uh, I've done a few baptisms in, home, in homes and things like that. It, it, you know, and, and you rejoice. And uh, one sweet soul... Uh, although I had been visiting this person in his home for, for quite some time, uh, catechizing him, uh, uh, he was so unwell. The first time he set foot in church, the actual physical church, uh, the church building, was when his body was rolled in inside his casket. That is grace. Uh, he was, you know, the, the, the grace was proclaimed at home, and it wasn't long before he died that I baptized him, some of his family members around. It was an absolutely wonderful day in his living room. Uh, and we had the sacrament for the first time, too. It was, it was glorious. So the point here is, is that when we, as you know, God's people, we rejoice that the Lord is generous and gives to the last the same as the first. You know? and, and very often that's us, too, when we really think about our lives. We're, we're not really first in anything, but, uh, uh, but God gives us. Uh, he, he gives us the gift. Uh, he, we, we get the full thing. We get the full Christ. We get the full pay, if you will, with the full reward. The full, And it's the reward that he earned. It's the pay that he earned. And we are ushered in in the heirs to everlasting life. Really, this is the theme for tomorrow as well, not this reading. But, you know, this is, this is grace. This is uh, the forgiveness that we live in in Jesus Christ our Lord. All right, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, grant us a blessed rest this night as we awake tomorrow and prepare to receive the blessed sacrament and the Christ who comes to us in these gifts. Be with those who are traveling this night and throughout the day tomorrow. Grant them safe travel and those who will be enjoying a time of fun. We do ask you to keep them safe and reasonable in their celebrations. Heavenly Father, bless our church as we again remember the gift of the gospel, which hopefully we, we uh, rejoice in every Sunday as we uh, commemorate as your people Reformation Day. Heavenly Father, we ask you as always to be with those who are crying out to you for healing, for Dennis, and Tony, and Nicholas, and, and uh, Jason, and Megan, and Kelly, and Helen. All these are friends of the congregation. Heavenly Father, we ask you to place your hand upon them, and according to your gracious will, heal them. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn 566, By Grace I'm Saved. By grace I'm saved, grace free and boundless. My soul believe and doubt it not. Why stagger at this word of promise? Has scripture ever falsehood taught? No, then this word must true remain. By grace you too will life obtain. By grace none dare lay claim to merit. Our works and conduct have no worth. God in his love sent our Redeemer, Christ Jesus, to this sinful earth. His death did for our sins atone, and we are saved by grace alone. That stands as one and two of six of hymn number 566, By Grace I'm Saved. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.